drawing and drawing and drawing. So the, the pastor would preach in the corner, and we had two hallways. That was a, that's where we sat, and then the middle was where the nursery and children's church was, where all the offices were. It's kind of really weird, uh, but it was really cool. Pastor Christensen was the original pastor of that church. So, um, yeah, we love uh, that, that church. We just, Freedom Fest thing has started when the church, when the city lost a lot of money uh, when the, the plant closed. And so the city was doing fireworks uh, every year. So they took it over. The church paid for everything. And then it's just growing and growing and growing from that. Pastor Christensen started that because... Um, no, it's not Pastor Christensen. Um, yeah. I was wrong. What's his name? Gerald, um, no. <laughs> oh, sorry, Gina knows. it's the second pastor that was there. Pastor Christensen was the first pastor, and the second pastor was the one that started Freedom Fest. But anyway, uh, I'll get my facts right in a little bit. Uh, I was a bit on vacation, so I can't think straight. So, <laughs> um, hallelujah. You know, uh, I'm going to be preaching out of 1 Peter, so let's see you guys can turn there today, but I have a few thoughts I just want to share with you randomly, is that okay? And then we're going to we're gonna hit into the Word, and I'll try and get done in about 15-20 minutes today, uh, no guarantees uh, and that, uh, but I don't want to just ramble, but I just feel like God has given me some things through this vacation because uh, I, I do believe we're like in the end times, and we need to be prepared for that. I do believe that we're going to make it happen if our life is right here on earth, right? And there's things to do, but God's really looking for a pure heart, right? He's looking for us to love Him. Jesus commanded this. He says, all the law and the prophets were fulfilled when Jesus came, right? Amen. And then He says, if you obey these two things, then, you know, you're going to be good to go, right? And I'm thinking, okay, two commandments? That's easy. <laughs> like, you know, there wasn't ten. I just got two now. So I'm like, this is cool. Thank you, Lord. I'm, you know... And so I look at it and it says, to love God, come on, you know this, right? <laughs> to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Everything within us, love God, our Father, who created us and created all things. Knows all things. Loves all things. Redeemed all things. Amen? And then he said, the second commandment is like the first. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. Yep. And the church since then, and the people said, I can do the second one. I can love my neighbor, I can help people, I can work towards my heavenly goal, because works is really easy. Well, some of us might not be doing it, because we're clocking here, but some of us might not be doing it, but the, the second part is easier. You know, somebody needs a few bucks, you give them some few bucks. You need some, somebody needs a little help here, you help them, right? Love my neighbor, it's easy. It's the works part of that. We can go do something. It's so easy to do. I mean, we were in Veracruz, Mexico, and uh, Jesus' family is in an area that's uh, not the richest part of town. And so you see a lot of things that just move your heart with compassion. You say, well, I want to help there, I want to help there, I want to help there, right? It's just, you see it. Anytime you go on a mission trip, you, you know, go someplace, you know? You think you're getting really... Help us, help us, I was gonna actually do that, so thank you. Let me turn that off. <laughs> These new gadgets, man. Yeah, good Lord. But you, it's so easy to be moved with compassion and listen to the Spirit of God and then do right. Mm -hmm. The hard part is to love God. All my soul, with everything. Why did Jesus start with that? Because we're selfish. We want stuff. We want to do things. We want to satisfy our fleshly desires. We want things that are contrary to God. God knew that. That's why He sent the Spirit to convict us and teach us and guide us and lead us to truth. Amen? Love God with everything that's within us. And think about that a lot. I have to say this, I have to ask myself this question. Do I love God with everything that's within me? Because if I don't, the consequences are great. Uh -huh. we, we don't look at We look at, oh yeah, I love God. We got that. I go to church on Sunday. We worship together. You know, whatever. Right? It's like we have this relationship with God, but we really don't have this love relationship with God. 
It's like dating somebody without actually really loving them. What do I get out of this person? What do I get out of this person? Can they meet my needs? Can they meet what I want? But in God, it's different. He loves you even though you don't meet any of his needs. Mm -hmm. hmm? That's why I tell sinners, unbelievers, I tell them that. I said, listen, God loves you even if you hate him. He still loves you. Yep. That's what's so different about the salvation of God, is that He loves me in my worst time. He loves me when I just feel guilty about everything I do, about my life, about my thoughts, about my actions. He still loves me. And when I share that with an unbeliever, they go, no, He can't love me. I'm, when the Holy Spirit's convicting, I'm no good. How can God love me? You can talk to anybody in the world across any spectrum and tell them those things. They'll realize by um, in a moment that they're not worthy to be in God's presence, right? They, there's something wrong. They, they don't live right. They do things that are wrong. The Holy Spirit is convicting all the time as we're speaking. And we're, we have to look at God, love Him without getting anything in return. That's that love that talks about. Love God with all your heart, with everything that's in you. Love Him, even though God never does another thing for you. Amen. Love Him like that, like He loves you. The purity of that love will sustain you through anything in life. And then you have to examine yourself. You say, do I love God that much? It seems like it's a lot, right? Like, I have to get rid of all my... Uh, worldly thoughts, all my worldly desires, you know, my, my plans for my life, I have to set aside and do His plans. Do what He wants. Understand His will over my will. Yes, God, I love you that much to give up this for you. We kind of did that when we said yes to Him when we first got saved. Do you remember that day? Do you remember the day when you said, or you recognized that you were absent from His love, and you desired to be in His love, and you said no to your old life, and you said, I'll step into this new life? Remember that day? Do you remember the day when you said, I am no, not even worthy to be in His presence, but God, you love me, and I, you felt that forgiveness for the very first time? You were pure, you were holy, unclean thoughts and actions were no part of your life anymore. Even if it was just for a brief second, God changed you. You were born again. You were a new creature in Christ. Everything was gone. I'm now brand new like a little baby. My life was changed. And then you began to learn to love this Father it wasn't instant, but it was pure. It was holy. It changed everything that was inside you. And you say, yeah, I, I love this God. This is amazing. I don't deserve this, but this is, wow. Thank you, Lord. I still remember that moment. It's like it just happened this second ago. That God changed my life from a no good, unbeliever, Sinner, pothead, <laughs> just a wretched kid. God changed my life. And as I walk in, as a young believer, I learned the things of God and I got excited about every time I opened up the Word of God, it was new and new revelation of who He is, His love, His grace, His understanding of my life. I just began to grow and grow and grow, and I had to share this love that I received with everybody. I told them my story once here that even a tree was there. I would talk to the tree and tell them about God, how wonderful, because it says the trees will clap their hands and mm -hmm. praise to God. I'm thinking that they know about God. Mm -hmm. Amen? I want to know about this God that the whole creation will worship one day. Together, we're going to worship God. Amen? It's amazing. I, my life was just full of God. Over and over, Tina and I began our journey together as new believers. And everything we did, we went through the lens of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Every decision was through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
as we named our children, as one and after another came, we named them after things of the Word of God because it was part of our life. I think at that point, I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. I think everything within me, I loved Him so much. And I grew, and then I got into theology, oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, just stuff about the Word of God, how we preach, how do we teach, how do we, how do we lead people to get deeper in the Word of God, amen, and love God with all their heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Then we came against this time in my life where it seemed the presence of God wasn't there. Trial after trial after trial, circumstances after circumstances, middle of the night when the children were sick. Didn't feel God's presence, but knew that His healing power was real. And prayed over our children to God heal our children. Yeah. I remember the first time God healed somebody in our lives. We were brand new Christians. On Friday night, we used to have a party at our house. That was, you know, all my buddies from the Marine Corps would come over. Tina would cook. We'd have food. We would drink. We would do stuff. And that was our Friday night. Well, we became Christians. Friday night out came Bible study night. All my buddies would come over with their six packs and their dope and stuff and wanted to party and then we would open up the Word of God. I, I didn't know nothing. I didn't, I didn't know all the books of the Bible yet. But I'd read, start Matthew and we'd read, right? And they would ask me questions. i go, I don't have an answer. i just read from the Word of God. I don't have no answers. I'm just telling you Jesus loves you, right? That's my whole Bible theology. But they one after another got saved. They got saved. They gave their life to Jesus. They gave their life to Jesus. Pretty soon we had 13, 14 people that we were able to baptize at the local church. Amen. 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 I love God. But as I matured, and as I grew in the Lord, and as we grew in ministry, something changed. I didn't hear his voice all the time. I still walked in faith. I seen things happen, but you don't always, like God, like you're growing like a teen, it's like a baby, a toddler, and then as a teenager, you stumble and fall, but God still gives you grace. You remember those days? Mm -hmm. Huh? You, you share it with your neighbor about Jesus. He argued with you. You didn't have an answer, but you said, it's Jesus, 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 and that's all you could say? Remember those days, you're teen, like you're a teenager. You think you know everything. We thought we knew a lot, but we know nothing. Challenge our pastor and the Word of God. That was a wonderful week or two. He told us we were wrong. We told him he was wrong. We didn't know nothing, but just knew God's presence. We actually got kicked out of the church, so I guess we were. I still think I was right now. <laughs> Not with pride, but with the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. See, there was some teaching that we were reading in the word of God, and he was preaching from the pulpit that was contra contradictory to the word, so we were bold enough to say, hey, what are you talking about? And as we grew and grew in the Lord, God just gave us grace and doors of ministry, and we've seen things happen, miracles after miracles, and children ministries and street ministries and we walk into gay neighborhoods that we shouldn't have been in and God gave us just a, a path of grace and peace come over our neighborhood I mean not just the area where we were ministering with God, the whole neighborhood had this peace over us because of our presence and because God's presence obviously not us but because we were there wonderful journey that we've been on and I remember came up, we were at a crossroads, and we are in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Why am I telling you all this? It was just an introduction. Um, came to a time, a moment where, what do we do next? We have a family. There was a decision, decision that had to be made. God, and we knew enough about God, and saw enough things happen, that we didn't want to do another thing in our lives unless God did it. Right? You've been, ever been there? Like, okay, God, I'm not sure what's good, what, what road. I'm at a road. Do I go right, left? Do I go straight? Which way do I go? Many of us will have that time in our lives. It's, it's complicated. Everybody has different roads, different reasons. Financial, relational. There's just turmoil in our life you don't understand but God has an answer we knew that because of our history with God and we said we're gonna, not going to make a move until you move us God I remember that and I remember praying that morning 
because the church we were in, Pastor McMillan was a kind of, he was sick. He was he was having some medical issues, and we thought this church of 120, 130 people was going to be we'd help pastor that church, and we did help assist him in everything that we could do. I mean, you name it, we did it. From washing floors to painting to ministering to taking the church for the first time into an area of that city that the drugs were so rampant that every house in that neighborhood had a drug issue. And that's the neighborhood God said, go minister. And we did. It, was a, it wasn't scary for me, but for the church it was. Because <laughs> they knew the neighborhood. They knew the area. They knew the shootings and all the stuff that went on there. And I didn't know nothing about it, but I knew that the Spirit of God said, go take them there. And that's what we did. And we loved out some people there. And um, it was amazing. It was an amazing moment. Amazing ministry time for that, for that church. But I remember at that point we're at this crossroad decision. Do we stay? Do we go? Do we start a new church? The district offered us a, a church or church plant. I mean, we just had so many decisions. What do you want, God? I remember praying behind the piano. I've shared this many times, but I just that morning, and I and God reminded me of this this week. That's why I'm sharing it with you. I was behind the piano at that church, praying, asking God, what's next, God? And God said this to me, and this is what, I mean, not, not a verbal, you know how God speaks, right? He's a still, small voice. Sometimes he speaks audible. We see that in the Word of God. This wasn't one of those moments. I was waiting for one of those moments. I was praying for that. God, just say what you want. I'll do what you want, God. I'll go wherever you want. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And that moment, God said to me this. And this is what I'm, I'm muddling over this. Uh, and I hope this triggers something in your heart. He says, what do you want to me? And I said, if I should be a, a senior pastor, then take the desire out of my life. I'll serve Pastor McMillan until you come back. That's what I said. And the Lord says, what do you want? Again, and I said, well, I would like a church building because we've been involved in church planting, or if you will, all our military career. So everywhere, every town we went, we would just get up with a local pastor that was started starting a church and we'd help them. And like we said, we just were servants. We just do whatever uh, needed to be done. And then he says, what else do you want? I mean, it's like, God, I'm just like, it was like we're talking right now, right? Like me and Kurt were talking earlier, <laughs> right? It's like question, boom, answer, just quickly. It was back and forth, right? And he said, and he said uh, I said, what else do you want? I said, well, I want a worship team. We have people that actually play music with instruments instead of we did uh, uh, cassette tapes. Anybody remember those? You know? Yeah. So our music, our worship was with cassette tapes off and on, you know? Uh, so I always wanted musicians. God's always provided us ever since we've been here. Amen. And then God says, I, and then God said this to me: I will also give you the desire of your heart. Hmm. Right? And I didn't tell God this. I didn't ever pray this prayer because our prayers has always been: wherever you want us to go, God will go. Wherever you want us to serve, God will serve. It's our life is your life. And so when we went, when we got orders in the Marine Corps. And it says, okay, you're going to California. You know what we said? Praise the Lord. That's, another, that's where God wants us to go. We didn't say, oh my God, we're just started this church plant here. We've been working two years and, you know, the church is starting to grow. And God, what's, you, what are you doing? We never said that. We said, okay, God, go. We packed up our family and we went. And every time we went, it was like that. And God says, I'll give you a desire. Our my desire in my heart secretly, to, and only God knew, was to come back to Wisconsin. Because my whole family is unsaved. Most of my family, brothers, sisters, my mom. And so I wanted to be able to be a light to them. But that would be like the last, on my list of things that I wanted was, you know, it was way back there, like, I didn't want God to, I mean, it was just me and God knew that. And so he, then we, we were able to come to Memphis, Wisconsin. And I just thank him for that. Amen. God knows where you're at. Mm -hmm. And God knows what's in your heart. And God says this this morning to each one of us. Love me. Because you can read the word. The word will convict you, right? The word will change you. The word will make you, you know, uncomfortable because that's what the Holy Spirit is always teaching us to be in the image of God. God knows what you're dealing with right now. And he wants you to know. He's a, a military. Uh, he's got your six. <laughs> he's 
you got your back. Okay? He knows exactly where you're at. And he says, will you follow me? This is my, this is the only thing that changed in my life, my preaching since those days way back when. Follow Jesus, be born again. Follow Jesus. Right? Follow Jesus. I used to preach, you gotta be born again, you gotta be born again, you gotta be born again. There's nothing wrong with that. I love that part. You know, we need to change our lives. We need to confess our sins. We need to, we need to uh, be like Jesus, right? But the part I never added to that was follow Jesus. Right? Matthew 28. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus and you'll make it I know Andy, Pastor Andrews, we're preaching on heaven, right? There's a judgment coming. We don't have to fear the judgment coming if we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, right? We don't have to. We don't have to fear the judgment coming if we love God with all our heart, with all our soul. We don't have to fear the judgment coming if we love our neighbor as ourselves. Well. Jesus was challenged when he was said that, and, he, and the, the next thing he says is, well, who's my neighbor? He didn't say, they skipped over the God commandment, and they went right to who's my neighbor, kind of interesting, because that's the hard one. The neighbor one is the, actually the easy one, I think. God loved you, and we should love everyone else. Can you say amen? amen. There's a judgment coming. We were <clears throat> saved one time. Do you remember that thing we always talked about a little earlier? We were saved. We are being saved. Correct? Yeah. We are being saved because every day, the things in our lives that's not like the character of God, God wants to get rid of. Right? We can just submit that to God and get rid of that out of our lives, or we can continue to be selfish and do what we want. Amen. I'll say see. <laughs> <laughs> said that a lot last week. See. And then our salvation will be made complete when Jesus comes back. Amen. Amen. Our salvation will be made complete when Jesus comes back. Amen. Amen. We need to be ready for that judgment. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So let's go to the scripture just for a few minutes and then we'll close, okay? That was just the introduction, so uh, praise the Lord. Anybody. I don't want to say that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth. That means we're born again. Amen. Into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into the inheritance that can never perish. You have an inheritance. That's heaven. Amen? And it will never perish, right? It will never perish, spoil, or fade. Keep in, uh, uh, keep in heaven for you, who, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last times. So there's a salvation that's coming that's going to be revealed in the last times, which is not a secret anymore. It's not a mystery anymore. Like Paul says, it's already been revealed that Jesus included everybody in salvation. Every people group in the world will be saved. That was the mystery. That was what the gospel was... Uh, was changed as the Jewish people began to realize that it wasn't just for the Jews to be saved, but for every people group in the world to have salvation. We have that hope. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It says, um, uh, through, through faith, uh, see, verse 6, in this you're, you greatly rejoice, through, uh, th though now for a little while you will have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. How many here <laughs> are suffering a little grief in certain trials? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> Are we going through some stuff in life? We all do, but God is the only way out through our trials and tribulations. Amen? Jesus provided the peace through the storm. Amen? We can speak to the water as Jesus spoke and say, be still, and it will be still in our heart. Let me say that again. When you speak to the storm, 
The bills are piling up. These relationships are driving me crazy. Just, just so much turmoil, right? In your heart, you can have peace in every situation because Jesus is Lord over all that if you believe it in your heart. Amen. And we can't believe in our heart until we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Amen? Only then can we speak to the storm, because I love God. I'm saying, God, I'm trusting you. The word, when we said, I believe today, we sang it. We said, I believe God. When we said, I believe, we said this. This is the Greek of that word. I'm just not going to try to act oh, like I'm real smart or anything. I'm just saying, that word, I've studied over and over. If I adapt, if I hear my life to Jesus... Then I'll be saved. If I believe God with all my heart, if I adapt and if I believe Him that what He said is true, then I can speak to this craziness and say, be still, and in my heart, there'll be a peace that nobody can understand. Amen. What are you, why are you so peaceful in this? Your situation is so crazy. You, you, should, be all, you, know, you should be fearful. And why, why are you so calm? I'm calm because of Jesus in my heart. I'm not calm because of any other reason. I'm calm because Jesus put peace there. My hope and my salvation is in Him and not in what I see in the world. Can you say amen? amen. It's because of Him that we have this eternal peace that is not something that is only the future hope that we have, but it's present right now in your life. I mean, I, and when I was sick for two days, and I, I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't go like, we didn't run to the hospital, we didn't run, you know what I'm saying? We just like, Jesus. Amen. Now we got some, some, some help, but you know, it was Jesus that gave us the calm in our body so we could make it back to the United States. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But, you know, it's the peace of God that will do that for you. And I don't care what your age is. God wants to do that for you. Amen? And I, just, I'm gonna, I wanted to go through all this, but I just spoke too much this morning. So let's jump down to verse 10. Concerning this salvation, so verse 10. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that who was to come to you searched intently and with great care, trying to find out the time and circumstance so that the Spirit of Christ in them was pointed uh, pointing when uh, was pointing when he predicted the suffering of Christ yeah. and the glorious uh, and the glorious that would follow. Jesus uh, came and provided for you everything. It was revealed to them that they were now serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of the things that they now have been told you, uh, you by those who were preached the gospel, I'm messing this all up, by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, even angels long, uh, long to look into these things. So he's talking about the salvation that Jesus provided for all of us, even the angels long for this to happen. Listen, there, the angels of heaven are standing at the ready mm -hmm. to come get us. Amen. To make your salvation complete. There's a hope in that. Amen. He's coming. Some of us that are a little older, we're a little closer than we think sometimes. That's why there's no fear of death. That's why I told our friend, Jesus, he's something you have to hear this. Jesus took the sting of death, hell, and the grave away. Amen. There's no fear when we pass from this life into eternity. God provided that for our salvation. Some of us guess we were down in Mexico and, and uh, you know, we had some, that's not some good report for one of the people there. And it's, there's this natural fear of hearing the doctor's reports, right? This gloom that comes over the room and like, oh no, what are we going to do? Yeah, it's scary to be physically not well. But when we set our eyes on our Creator, we're going to go from this life to the next. There's a hope of seeing Him and a peace to go through that whole process. That's 
that's the only thing that brought peace to that room of the hospital that I knew before I left. Because Jesus loves you in all your trials and tribulations. This is a challenge. The next verse, verse 7, uh, 13. And my Bible has this little title that says, Be Holy. Now, sometimes I read all the way up to this part, and then I don't read the other part. Do you ever do that? You read the Bible, and all of a sudden you know the next part is going to get you, so you don't read it? Is that just me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I read all the way up to this verse, number, uh, what is it, uh, third, uh, 12, it says, oh, that's good, I have salvation, I have hope in Jesus, and then I, the second part I don't want to read because I know it's going to it's gonna get me, right? Or is that just, you know, no, just me? Okay, I'm sorry, it's just like, okay, I, I'm going to read all the good parts, all the parts I have highlighted in my Bible, I don't read the other parts, you know, because I know it's going to get me, right? You know what I'm talking about, yeah. And I'm like, hey, this is tough, this is tough, so I'm going to read it anyway, okay? Therefore, prepare your minds for the action of the self-control, set your hold fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, it's funny how God calls us kids, right? Do not conform to the evil desires you have when you live in ignorance. So he's saying, he's talking to believers here. He's saying, don't live like you did before you believed. Amen. Right? So you're, when you became born again, when you started believing, your life changed. Old things, remember I said earlier in my life, old things pass away and everything becomes new. And all of a sudden we start going back to the old life. Why do we do that? Anyway, we won't get into too much. You, you deal with that guy with God. All right, go back, but don't be like that. He's warning them right now. This is the part of the Bible I hate reading sometimes. Okay, can I just be honest with you? Like, this is this is the tough stuff, right? It says, but just as he who called you into to his holy, just like he who called you is holy, so be holy all, all, uh, all in all you do. Be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Mm -hmm. I mean, look up holiness. It's not about, uh, it's not about everything we do on the outside. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I've been to church, we've been to Holiness Church in Jacksonville, North Carolina. All the ladies wear buns in their hair, you know, and the long dresses, and there was this, Right, this outward appearance of holiness, right? And it, it wasn't it wasn't required as far as I read the word about God, right? It, I mean, it's, it's nice. I mean, fine. If you want to do wear long dresses or, or or the guys wear suits all the time and suit tie every every service, there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's your holiness, then that's wrong. Mm -hmm. The holiness that like this I believe is talking about here is this pure heart thing, mm -hmm. where I'm clean before God, right? And so if I'm wearing shorts or I'm wearing a suit, it doesn't matter. God loves you, right? Am I right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And if I'm wrong, just tell me because I'm, 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 I can handle that, you know? But you know, it's like this pure heart, the pure mind, thoughts. What am I thinking, right? In my daily thinking, right? What am I allowing to come into my life? Is it holy? Is it pure? Is it what God is? He's asking you to be just like Him, isn't He? And if He's asking you to be like Him, He's giving you the ability to be like Him. Think about it. God's not asking you to do anything you aren't capable of doing, but I think He knows that we can't do it on our own. Mm -hmm. I think He knows that we struggle with the flesh, we struggle with the mind, He knows these things. And He says, I'm going to give you a helper, I'm going to give you a paraclete, I'm going to give you somebody to come alongside you every day, every moment, to help you so you can have a pure heart, a pure mind for God. He said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And, that's, and I thank God for the Holy Spirit. He reminds me, and I'm reading the Word of God, He reminds me of another scripture and another scripture and puts things together for me so I can understand, understand the things of God. There's not a secret. There's no secrets here. God doesn't want to hide from you. He wants to reveal to you all that He is. And as we desire Him with all our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength and be like Him, then all of a sudden we begin to change and look like Him. And then when we come to an area like we were visiting, and we're moved with compassion immediately because we have the heart of God about our situation, about people, about uh, you know everything that's going around around us, right? We see it in a different lens. We don't see it as selfish. We see it as a ministry that God's called us to do instead of going, oh, no, that's for somebody else to do. See, I think we're all called to do God's work. We're all called to be preachers. We're all called to proclaim the gospel in everything that we do. 
That's why we teach here that everything you are, God gave you. Mm -hmm. All your, your mind. Some people are, I can just be honest, some people are more intelligent than others. <laughs> I say, yeah, go God use them. You know, I'm just not that person, right? Or uh, maybe have skills in this area or skills in that area. God gave you all those talents, right? To use for His glory. Well, I don't have no talents. Yeah, you're alive, you're breathing. God gave you what you are, who you are. To be, to do, and to love like He loves to change us. You can read the rest. I'm not going to go into it, but it talks about being purified and all those wonderful things. But the last part, for all Men are like grass. This is the last uh, verse 24. Or let's do verse 23. Or, I'm sorry. I love you guys. Thank you for putting up with me. Know that you, verse 22, know that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers. Love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, not seed of man, mm -hmm. but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Peter was telling this to a church that was being persecuted. This letter was written, if you look at the first two verses, to a group of churches or people groups that were being persecuted for the gospel's sake. He was reminding them of who and what Jesus is and where their heart should be. And I want to remind you of that today. Where is your heart today? Where is your heart today? Let's close with that. Where is your heart today? Am I pursuing God, our Creator? Or am I so bound up in my stuff that all I can think of me. And God just wants to take that away. God wants to heal that today. God wants to set you free from that today. As we turn our hearts towards the piano. My question when I told my story behind that piano, and God said, what do you want? My next words, I think, maybe this is where I failed about. At that moment, God says, I'll give you what you want. This is what I should have said. This is what I should have said. God, what do you want? And I'm not saying that, that everything we did over these years is bad. I'm just saying maybe what I should have said at that moment is, God, what do you want? Maybe we should say that today. Let's bow our heads. Take a moment.